G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today I've got a tutorial where we're going to look at how we can bulk upgrade models um, on a server. So not on BIM 360 in this case, that's a bit of a different process. Probably involves using some Forge development, but in this case we're just working with work shared and non-work shared models in a server-based environment. In this case I'll be working from one folder in specific, uh, specifically I should say, um, and then upgrading them to a new version uh, just by simply opening and saving them in this case. But I'm going to show you how you can batch run this across multiple files. In this case, we'll be using the Rhythm package just to access two really clean and easy to use nodes that are well suited for this task. So let's jump in. Okay, so this is a uh, fairly straightforward workflow. Um, in order to upgrade these models, uh, we just need to open them and close them in principle. Um, there are lots of other tools that can do this like eTransmit. Uh, but in this case, I found this is a really good simple approach if your projects are on a server, um, not on BIM 360. So in this case, I'm going to begin by um, just having some projects available. In this case, I've got a non work shared project, which I'm linking into four other models. And two of these models are work shared, two of them aren't. So I want to use this to demonstrate that the concept works for both non work shared and work shared models. Um, I'm going to begin by opening up uh, Dynamo and making a new script. Now these models are in 2020, whereas I'm in 2021, because obviously you're going to be in a higher version than where you're upgrading your models from. So I'm going to begin just by getting a directory path to access where these models are located. I'm going to browse in this case to my projects folder, and I'm going to make a directory from path to turn this into a directory object that Dynamo can understand. To this, I'm going to just get the directory contents node. I think this is under file system, actually. Um, import, export, file system, uh, directory contents, I think it's called. Get directory contents. There it is. I'm going to take, in this case, the directory. Now, I'm going to search for just only particular types of elements. In this case, I'm looking for anything that's a Revit model. So what we're going to look for here is asterisk.rvt because we know that's the Revit model format. This way you won't find things like families, backup files, etc. I'm not going to include a subdirectories in this case, but if you are working with multiple subfolders as well, you would need to activate that. But be aware that this will go deep, like all the way down to the bottom of the file structure uh, that you're looking through. So don't run this across like your entire server, for example, because it's going to try and upgrade every single model it finds, <laughs> which could be quite a lot of them. But at this point, we can see that we found these five models um, that all begin with .rvt. After this, I'm going to be using a node from the Rhythm package. Um, so I'm going to use the open document file node in this case. And we're going to be providing the file paths that the directory contents have found. Now I'm going to switch to manual mode at this point because I don't want to run this straight away. Um, but understand that this, this node, as far as I've been able to tell, can open both work shared and non work shared models. It does have a set of options for work shared models, which is really useful. So I'm going to say in this case that I do want to close all work sets. Um, I believe everything else is set to true except for detach from central. Um, if you close all the work sets, it's just easier because it's less for the model to open and probably makes the process a little bit faster. You would want to be careful depending on how your work sets are behaving. For example, if you have some links that are room bounding, if you don't open the work sets, then you might find some things might, you know, become unbound temporarily. But the next time you open the model, it should correct itself. So just be aware some of those things might occur. So if you're trying to open documents and get something like a room area, maybe in that case you may want to turn on all the, all the work sets. Finally, um, when we're done, we're going to close documents. And I'm just going to use the same package. I'm going to use Rhythm just because I prefer to use um, nodes from the same package when they go together. In this case, they go together quite nicely. So in this case, once it's done opening those files, it's going to wait to generate an output. And then I'm just going to say true and I do want to save. So in this case, um, I think this should pretty much be it. This is pretty much all you need to do. Now, as far as I've been able to tell, um, this does actually upgrade the models if they're work shared um, and does save them. So I don't know if it actually does a sync with central, um, but it definitely does seem to upgrade the model per se. So in this case, um, I'll just see where that node comes from and just see if there's one with a synchronize option. No, it's just a close, close document. So. I guess in this case, we'll be able to see if it synchronizes. I assume maybe the node is built to do that by default. So it's a very small, simple little script. Um, as soon as we run this, it's going to go and open all the models, save them, and then close them. So I'm going to run. And in this case, we can see that the upgrades are beginning. First of all, it's finding some non-workshed projects. 
It's opening them all, so it's doing the three non-work shared, and now it's doing the work shared ones. And we should start to see backups appear for the non-work shared projects. And we should also see the timestamps on these two update progressively. And there we go. And we can see it looks like it has done a synchronize with Central because there's a new Revit temp, which is great. So let's just go and have a look at the actual results. So first of all, let's just open one of the non-work shared projects. Um, to see if the linked model is updated as well. And we can see the links didn't upgrade, which is great, which means that this linked file is understanding that it's upgraded as well. And there we go, no upgrade message. Let's just go and check one of the work shared projects. We can see it still understands the central model. It hasn't um, grayed out this create new local option, which is great. We open it up and once we specify work sets, it's gonna let us straight in with no upgrading required. So we can see it has successfully um, upgraded. Um, so really useful nodes from the Rhythm package as always. I've um, got to thank John Pearson for his work in sharing those with us. Um, but there we go. We can see that this is successfully upgraded both WorkShirt and non-WorkShirt projects. Very handy. So hopefully that was a useful video um, showing that you don't always need a super complicated approach to solve what can be quite a simple problem. Um, a lot of people are probably looking for things like upgrade nodes when really Revit just upgrades for us on opening, right? So sometimes you can sort of reduce a problem into a really a solution that's so stupid it's smart <laughs> if, if you look at it that way. Um, again, I know this doesn't work for things like BIM360 hosted models. That is really a beast unto itself. Um, I would recommend maybe looking over at the BIM coordinators channel. He does touch on BIM360 a little bit more than I do. I don't come across it as often as a BIM consultant, um, at least not from an administrative perspective. Um, so maybe check out his content, you might find something there that helps. Anyway, um, if you're not already following and subscribing, uh, feel free to do so, and I look forward to seeing you in future similar videos. Thanks, take care.